Let's say morning to everyone. Morning. Lord has been good to us. Amen. Amen. And what a privilege it is for us to be here on the first Sabbath of this year. Amen. 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 This blessed Holy Sabbath day. Yes. Amen. 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 David said, I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 He also said to make a joyful noise unto the Lord, holy lands. Mm -hmm. Amen. Serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. Amen. Yes. Come before his presence with singing. Amen. Knowing that the Lord, he is God. Yes. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. Amen. We are his people Amen. and the sheep of his past. They enter into his gates with thanksgiving Amen. and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. Amen. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth is daring to all generations. Amen. Amen. Know this, friend of man, that God will never fail us. We talk about keeping the Sabbath, but I've discovered the Sabbath is keeping us. Amen? Yes. Had it not been for the Sabbath, where would you and I be? The Sabbath reminds us that God is our creator. Amen? Yes. He has promised that He will never leave us. Never leave us, nor forsake us. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. As we face a new year with all its challenges and trials and new decisions, let us be reminded that He has promised that He will always be with us. And if God be for you, who can be against you? Amen. I frankly don't care what the devil. Does he can only do what God allows him. God got to give him permission. Yes. He cannot touch any one of God's children. So let us not bring upon ourselves a time of trouble before the time of trouble. Amen? Amen. Amen. We got to trust in the everlasting arms of Jesus. Mm -hmm. For those of you who love titles, I have entitled the message, Child. I think it's a, it's a time when we need to know that we have a peacemaker. Amen? Yes. Shalom means a peacemaker. I invite you to bow your heads with me as we have a word of prayer. Loving Father in heaven, we come with you of grace to give you thanks for being so good to us. As we open your words upon our minds and give us understanding, may we learn something that will draw us closer to you. Speak to me, through me, and for me. And we will be careful to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. Mm -hmm. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shiloh, the peacemaker. It is the first promise that God gave to the human race. I read in Genesis chapter 3, verse 14. And 15, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, above every beast of the field, and upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And, verse 15, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise her head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. It is the first gospel promise, the proto-evangelium, the first promise of hope that God gave to the human race. Yes. And this is Shiloh. God has promised that the devil will not have total control over the human race, but he will be met with resistance along the way. Amen. Yes. And God has promised a peacekeeper, a peacemaker will come. He shall bruise thy head, that word they shatter thy head, and thou shall bruise the seed. In other words, God will give the devil a death blow to the head. Amen. Sin will come to an end, amen, and that's good news. Amen. And this will be done by the peacemaker. I want us to recognize when God said this, before he said to Adam and Eve, 
your sorrow shall be multiplied before he said to them that curse the ground for thy sake thorns and thistles also shall break forth before he said to them by the sweat of thy brow thou shall eat bread before God said these things to Adam and Eve he said to them that I will give you good news that a peacemaker shall come and we serve a loving God Amen, Amen. He has promised us salvation. Our God is a loving Heavenly Father. Amen. amen. And if your Bible is here with you, I want you to say Amen. I want you to say Amen. 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 That word, the psalmist David said, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Amen. amen. David said, I. What have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee? You know, in Jesus' temptation in the wilderness, he said to the devil, it is written. And I had thought that that was the only time he said, it is written. But growing up, this was the word that Jesus used all his life. In his daily association, he said, it is written. To his friends, to, the, to his colleagues, to the, the, the teachers, the rabbis, he always used these words, it is written. So when the devil came to him, he said, it is written. He always pointed to the word of God. Amen. 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 And if we are not familiar, if we don't familiarize ourselves with the word of God, it will be difficult for us to say it is written. Our only saved God is in the word of God. Amen. Amen. It is written. Isaiah got the promise in Isaiah 7 14. Therefore, the Lord shall give you a sign. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. God with us, the peacemaker, amen. amen. The one who will give a death blow to an enemy. Sin will not reign forever. It will come to an end, what do you say? Amen. Yeah. Isaiah 9, 6, What was a child is born, what was a son is given? And the government shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace, the Peacemaker. God loves us, what do you say? Amen. John chapter 18, reading from verse 6. We're going to pick up our story. The last scene of Jesus' life and ministry. Judas had already plotted to betray his master. Came to and he knew where Jesus would be. He came with the mob, the soldiers, the priests, and the multitude, with shield and sword, as though they were looking for a criminal. And daily Jesus went to the temple teaching and preaching. But they came at night looking for Jesus. And Jesus asked them the question in verse 4, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And he answered them and said, I am he, in verse 5. And verse 6 says, And soon then, as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Jesus said, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus. And he said unto them, I am he. You see, Jesus had asked the disciples to pray, but when he came to them, they were asleep. If they were praying, and he said unto them, don't pray for anybody else, pray for me. Mm. For the first time in his life, he asked them to pray for him. Because he began to feel the weight of sin resting upon him. On him hung the human race. Now, what you 
to know, friend of mine, that Jesus could have failed. But he came to seek and to save that which was lost. At any cost to himself, Amen. he set his face as a flip. He would not bow, he would not bend. At any cost to himself, he is going to save the human race. Amen. He is going to bring peace to you and I, what do you say? And that's good news. Amen. If they were praying, he would have been encouraged, but because they were asleep, God had sent an angel. And when the mob came looking for Jesus, the angel stepped between the mob and Christ, and divinity began to flash. Mm. Yeah. And sin cannot dwell in the presence of divinity, amen? amen. And the record is that they fell back to the ground. Priests and rulers and soldiers, even Judas. You would have thought they would have learned their lesson. But then when they regained their consciousness, they were ashamed. And again they said, again said Jesus, whom seek ye? And they said, verse 7, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go there. So much like Jesus. I told you I am he. If you seek me, let be go. If you seek me, let sinners go. If you seek me, let the disciples go. I am he. Jesus took the brunt of the matter. Now Peter, verse 10 says, having a sword, threw it. Now Peter was a zealot. And the zealot took a vow that, ne that they would never walk around without having a knife. Peter was a zealot, so he drew his sword. The Bible says he drew his sword and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Marcus. We cannot defend ourselves by our sword and our shield. Our only defense is Christ. Amen. Amen. What I'm trying to say, friend of mine, in the this new year, when the devil comes knocking at your door, don't go and open the door. You say Jesus every time. Amen. And when the devil sees Jesus, he will say, Pardon me, sir, I'm in the wrong residence. Yes, sir. Because you and I cannot fight sin or the devil. We are not matched for Satan. We gotta send Jesus every time. Amen. Let him fight your battles. Because he is the only one who has gotten the victory over sin and over the devil. Amen. Amen. A mighty fortress is our God. A bulwark never fails. Amen. Amen. Let him fight our battles for us. And turn your attention to John chapter 19. Our God loves us, what do you say? Amen. Jesus was brought that night. And all through the night he went through the mockery of a trial. You see, this night Nicodemus was not invited. Because Nicodemus had upset their plans. Nicodemus, who had made his visit to Jesus at night school, he learned that under the preaching of John the Baptist, it was heightened that the Messiah would soon appear. And Nicodemus, having heard about the coming Messiah, searched the scriptures diligently. And he looked upon the lifestyle of Jesus and, and the miracles and his humility. And he was so different from the rulers and the priests. And Nicodemus searched the scriptures diligently. And Nicodemus said to uh, the rulers, the high priests, as a matter of fact, Nicodemus was the ruler of the Jews. 
and he said to them, be careful, because we have persecuted the prophets, and the reason why we are in slavery, the reason why we are in bondage, because we have killed the servants of God. Be careful. He observed the life of Jesus. And as he searched the scriptures diligently, he recognized that Jesus was the promised Messiah. But because he was a man of low esteem, a man of no great pedigree, he could not openly identify with Jesus because he would have been ridiculed. But Nicodemus believed in Jesus. Amen? Nicodemus searched the scriptures. He was not invited that night when he had to take a Jesus. And they brought him to Pilate. Pilate decided to scourge Jesus. And the Romans had a knowledge of how many lashes a man could take because it was written in the scriptures. They should, be, they should not be beaten more than 29 stripes. So they knew how many lashes a man could take before he would die. And Jesus was beaten, trying to appease the Jews because verse 4, chapter 19, John chapter 19 and verse 4, Pilate therefore went forth again and said unto them, I bring him forth unto you that he may know that I find no fault in him. Now Pilate could tell, just looking at the fall of a man's brow, and tell whether he was guilty or innocent. Pilate had passed sentence on criminals all his life. When he took his first long lingering look at Jesus, he knew that this was no criminal because Jesus stood like a king in full composure of himself. He did not cower in the fear of danger against the accusation that was brought against him. And Pilate was marveled at the presence of Jesus, dignified. He looked like though he was in total control, amen? amen. Jesus did not fear. Verse 5, then came forth, then came Jesus forth wearing the crown of thorns. They planted the crown of thorns. When Jesus lifted the crown of thorns to his brow, symbolically, thorns represent a curse. He was taking the curse upon himself. Genesis 3, 18, thorns and this and those which shall bring forth. He was taking the curse of sin upon himself. And verse 6, Pilate again said, I find no fault in him. Why would you scourge somebody when you find no fault in him? Why would you sentence somebody to death if you find no fault in him? Pilate was weak. His wife had a dream of a panoramic view. She saw the Messiah. She saw the crucifixion. She saw the trial, she saw the mockery. Jesus was covered with blood and sweat and spit. She saw also the second coming, where Jesus came riding upon the white horse as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And she sent a message to Pilate. And she said to him, I have suffered many things this night, have nothing to do with this just man. But we will not listen. Many of us, we should have listened to our wives. And I said to the men in prison, you should have listened to your wives or else you wouldn't have been in the situation. But it, we think that we are in charge, we are in control. We are never in charge. Amen. Either the, the devil is running our lives or Christ. Because Christ himself says, he that is not with me, is against me. You cannot be sitting on the fence. There is no neutral ground. Either Christ or Satan. Amen. Amen. We need to allow God to be in control of our lives. What do you say? Amen. Jesus was led off to be crucified. And he said that the cross was invented by the Phoenicians. Some said that 
was invented by others. Phoenicians invented the cross, and the Egyptians embraced the cross, and when Rome came along, Rome modified the cross, and Rome used it for capital punishment. Rome would never crucify a Roman citizen on the cross, or the runaway slaves and hardened criminals ended up on the cross. But Jesus was neither a runaway slave, nor was he a hardened criminal. How was he able to end up on the cross? He was accused of blasphemy, claiming to be God, and Jesus was God. You see, when Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am, in a Jewish man, that is as high as you can go in claiming to be deity. And the record said that they took up stones to stone him. But Jesus was all that he claimed to be, amen? amen. He was fully God, and that is the mystery of divinity became human. When he took upon himself sinful flesh, he took upon him the curse of the human race. And the part of the law in Israel was, if you were hung on a tree or crucified on a cross, which was part of a tree, you were under the curse of God. And therefore your enemies were told not to feel, even your relatives were told not to feel sorry for you. If you would stand before a judge back in those days, and the judge would pass a sentence that your body should be shot through with arrows until you die, or you should be fed to wild animals, you could come back to your cell and still look forward to a part in the resurrection. But if a judge would pass a sentence that you should be hung on a tree or crucified on the cross, in their mind you were under the curse of God. And you were lost. You could not look forward for a part in the resurrection. But Jesus was led to be crucified. And he was crucified between two thieves. I want to remind us that when the high priest entered the most holy place on the day of atonement, Yom Kippur, only once a year, only the high priest, upon the corporate or the mercy seat, you are two angels. If the angel on the left hand side would be covered with darkness, then the high priest knew that he would fall there. But if the angel on the right hand side would lit up, then the high priest knew that the sacrifice on behalf of the nation of Israel was accepted. Amen. And his life was spared. I want you to know a friend of mine on the cross, the thief on the right hand side lit up in faith. He had listened to the preaching of John the Baptist. He had looked at the calm composure of Christ. He had heard of the ministry of Jesus, how the blind saw, and the deaf heard, and the lame leaped for joy, and the leper was cleansed, and the demoniac was restored to the right man. When he looked at Jesus and he said, This is no criminal, they both reviled Jesus and said to him, If you be the Christ, come down and save yourself and us. But somehow faith sprang up in his life. And he said, this is the Son of God, the Lord promised Messiah. Amen. And he said, remember me when you come in your kingdom. And Jesus gave him the promise of assurance. Even at the eleventh hour, you can receive deliverance. You can receive healing by the peacemaker. Amen. Amen. By Jesus Christ himself. Our Lord loves us. He follows the sinner to the gates of hell. He is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. What do you say? Amen. Yes. My Jesus had the assurance. He could not see beyond the portals of the tomb. He could not see himself coming from the grave a conqueror. He could not tell of the Father's acceptance on behalf of the human race. Even for the resurrection, he depended on the Father. Even though he said, I have power to lay down my life and power to take it up again. He depended on, upon the Father. We talk about our faith. Our faith, the 
does not save us, friend of mine. Our faith is simply the vehicle that leads us to Christ. Our faith is simply the hand that puts our hand in the hand of Jesus. There is salvation and not in our faith. Salvation is in Jesus Christ yes. and Him alone. <coughs> our faith leads us to Christ. Our faith leads us to take hold on the peacemaker, Shiloh, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. And Jesus hung on the cross, friend of mine. The rusty spikes were his scepter, and the cross was his throne. <coughs> the cross was invented back in the days of Nimrod, when Tammuz was born, because Nimrod was worshipped. When he died, he went to, supposedly, his spirit went to the sun god, and they worshipped the sun. His wife, named was Simaramus. And long after she, he died, she became pregnant. And she said it was an immaculate conception. Tammuz was born on the 25th of December. Not Christ. Christmas is a pagan celebration. There is nothing Christian about Christmas. Amen. I'm here to let us know the truth. What do you say? And the truth shall set you free. We wear the cross around our necks. We are not to wear the cross, we are to bear the cross. Yeah. Light is not made to look at, light is made to walk in. Amen? Yeah. That's why Jesus says, take up your cross and follow me daily. The cross was a symbol of sun worship. Are you listening to me? The cross was a symbol of sun worship. And when she became pregnant, Long after Nimrod died, a son name was Tammuz, T, the first letter of his name. He died at an early age by a wild boar. That became the 40 days of weeping for Tammuz, which, which became known as the Christian Lenten season. It's all pagan origin, friend of mine. When Jesus hung on the cross, he died on the symbol of sun worship. A pagan symbol of, sun, of the sun. But I want you to know that Jesus conquered the sun God. Amen? Amen. Because he is the peacemaker. Amen. Pilate had written verse 19 and Pilate wrote the title and put it on the cross and the writing was Jesus of Nazareth the king of the Jews and the Jews were upset. Say not he is the king of the Jews, but say I am the king of the Jews. And Pilate said, what I have written, I have written. Pilate did not, was not even aware of what he had written. Amen. And all scholars believe in verse 20 it says, and it was the latter passes, and it was written in Hebrew, in Greek, and in Latin. Why was it written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek? See, Latin was the language of the strong, the strongest among those born among women, the strongest men who have power over other men, men who have power over community, over countries. What the message was saying is that Pilate should, that Jesus should be king amongst the strong in politics, in rulers, in nations. It was also written in Greek. The language of culture, meaning that in every culture, Jesus should be called king. In the med school, in arts, in science, in, in science, in every culture in life, in the White House, among politics, among the nations of the world, Jesus should be called king. And it was written in Hebrew. Hebrew, the language of religion. And I'm saying to us that in every language, in every religion, Jesus should be king. And if Jesus is not king here, all our preaching and all our singing is like a tinkling cymbal and sound and brass. Jesus should be king. He should be the center of our worship. Amen. Amen. We tend to highlight and amplify men and amplify preachers and teachers and the televangelists and all the talk 
is about themselves, but Jesus should be king. In every language of the world, Jesus should be king. He should be king of our lives. 